Hi, I'm Richard Velasquez. I'm going to talk about AR in the enterprise. And I'm going to be speaking, uh, actually, some of the examples I'm going to be using are both AR and or VR. I could use both. Um, so I'm not really distinguishing between those in this presentation. I happen to be a paragliding pilot, but I'm also a hand gliding pilot. And while they're two very slightly different experiences, the, the Uber effect is really the same as enjoying free flight. So I'm not going to focus too much on the differences between AR and VR. but. Let's do this. So I'm speaking from the enterprise perspective because my entire career has been in large companies. I started as an automotive design engineer with Honda and Porsche. I moved on to do brand management for Procter & Gamble. I uh, did product management for Xbox at Microsoft and leading emerging technologies at, Pep at PepsiCo. So the challenge that I see as an innovation executive in a large enterprise pushing uh, technologies like AR and VR is really at this stage right now is the fact that still a large number of senior execs and other folks haven't actually used it. So when you're trying to explain an experience to them, it's difficult to, for them to make that connection. There's a cognitive dissonance there. So one of the things that I did at PepsiCo through my emerging technologies team is I set up an AR VR lab with Microsoft HoloLens and HTC Vive just to give people the opportunity to go and actually experience whether it's something that we were working on or whether it's something that exists like uh, Google Virtual Earth or something else, just so that they can have that aha moment and when you're talking to them about the potential experiences of AR in an enterprise, they can make that connection right away. So uh, through digital capital, um, we talked about this in terms of uh, the size of enterprise AR. So if you look at, this is broken out by uh, augmented reality and virtual reality. AR being bigger, of course, because AR you can do through your headset, uh, through your uh, smartphones, tablets, et cetera. So more people have access to augmented reality right now than they do virtual reality. And that will be true even, this is to uh, forecast for 2020. And as you can see, enterprise AR makes up um, a, roughly about 10 billion of this estimated $120 billion market in AR. So looking at it from the enterprise perspective, if, um, when you're looking at companies that come to pitch or opportunities to uh, drive AR in the enterprise, these are the four areas that I feel have been popping up in terms of the best ways to sell the AR experience into an enterprise. And I'm starting off with productivity improvements, brand building, employee engagement, and revenue generation. And I'm go gonna go through a couple of examples of each one of these. So we'll start with productivity improvements. Uh, and this includes things like remote service and support, technical training, and uh, some, some things that I was considering in terms of uh, that I call AR in the boardroom or AR in the, in the conference room, including project proposals and presentations, and I'll talk to that in a bit. But when we're talking about, when we're talking about remote service and support, it's those experiences where you allow your technical experts to connect with customers and our consumers to go through and have them self-support. So they can, you can walk them through uh, an actual uh, troubleshooting of their devices or whatnot remotely with them. Uh, this could also be used for training your own service personnel in terms of if you have uh, an enterprise where you have to service large equipment, for example, or do repairs, the actual technical training for your workforce can be leveraged through uh, augmented reality. And the reason why I put this one first is it's one of the easiest ones to calculate an ROI on. The previous four that I talked about is very fungible. So in this case, you could say I'm saving X amount of technical support dollars or I'm saving the travel and expenses to send somebody to a ro remote location or I'm saving this X amount of time. So you can actually start to calculate the dollar savings on this. And that's why it's one of the easier ones to justify in an organization. One of the things, uh, I was at uh, the Augmented World Expo last week in San Francisco, and uh, this kind of fits under, I guess, mixed reality. I call it augmented reality because you're augmenting your real experience. But one of the demonstrations I got was with Microsoft Story Remix, which was really fascinating. And I'll talk about how that comes into presentations. But in Story Remix, uh, you could take a regular cell phone video, and through the Remix 3D cloud, you can integrate 3D elements in there that uh, can be tied to, your, uh, tied to the video. So for example, if they're shaking in the video, once you lock that virtual character down, it'll shake with the video to actually make it, look like, uh, make it look like it's part of the scene. And then you can do things like they added special effects where the little kid there is blasting the dragon and the dragon falls over. It was really a compelling experience that they put together in less than five minutes. 
So when I was looking at that and I was thinking about how this is really Hollywood special effects studios done in somebody's computer for five minutes, you can start thinking about how uh, with pre corporate presentations or in the boardroom or presentation room, you can start really building these experiences that'll make your presentations really pop. And one of the things that in emerging technologies, I do a lot of stuff around creating prototypes and storyboards and whatnot to kind of help people visualize the product and or experience that you're trying to get across. Now, if people can start using uh, something like, if you can create special effects, you can create like a rapid prototype in 3D or whatnot and include it in your presentations. So this is going to become as easy, I see in the future, as creating a PowerPoint presentation today. And that's gonna help really drive that ideation process, brainstorming, acceptance of ideas, and really uh, shorten the period of time for you to actually start driving things into the market quickly. So that's what I was calling uh, boardroom, conference room, uh, AR experiences. Going on to brand building, I have, all, um, in terms of brand building, if you're dealing with an enterprise that's really focused on either consumer or big brands, uh, building brand awareness and brand affinity is a key part of what they do. And creating engaging experiences and expanding the audiences is pretty critical. So I'm gonna show you a quick video of, uh, this is actually three years old, but um, this took place in London. It was from, uh, the brand Pepsi Max, how many of you have seen this? The London bus stop? Okay, great, so for those who haven't. So this is relatively old in AR years, uh, but this was created, um, and when you think about it and you're looking at it, if you don't work with brands, you're like, well, why, how does that fit with this brand? Like, what does this have to do with anything? So it kind of ties in with the message of being unbelievable, having zero calories and unbelievable taste and an unbelievable experience. And really surprising customers and consumers at kind of just like this regular everyday point. And you can see once the surprise and shock got over, there's a lot of engagement. People start, as you'll see after this, people really start engaging and taking pictures and trying to get themselves in the experience as well. So in cases like this, when you're talking about, and once again, when you approach enterprises, a lot of times it's like, what's the ROI of something like this? It's very difficult to calculate what the ROI is, but in this case, it's really about the engaging experience and getting consumers excited. So you start looking at things like uh, number, of, uh, number of video views and or media impressions that get tied to this, and that's where the marketing teams really take effect. So in this case, when you're working with large brands, I think it's really powerful to connect with the agencies that actually support those brands and they understand the technologies and experiences that you can build so that they can pitch experiences and opportunities like this to you. One of the big, um, I think one of the big areas I see of potential in this space is if you think about brand activations and big, huge sporting events, say for example, like the Super Bowl halftime show or huge music festivals or whatnot, Brands pay a lot of money to be part of this and get their names and brands associated with it, but the people, the only people who really experience it are the people who are there, which is a small subset of the audience that they're trying to reach. Later on, like if you talk about Super Bowl or whatnot, people see it on TV, but they don't actually experience it. So I see in the future, if you could do live VR or AR streaming of an event and have people who are home or remote be able to put on those goggles or glasses and experience that at the same time that other people are experiencing it, that is gonna magnify the dollars that they spend on these events and that's gonna really drive that engagement, brand awareness and brand affinity that I was talking about earlier. And then on revenue generation, uh, and the reason I put that last is as I was trying to think about just the enterprises that I've worked in, how they could actually generate revenue from that. There's very few opportunities and I'd love to hear uh, what you guys are thinking in terms of driving revenue. The way I see it is using AR as a sales tool for customer demonstrations and for e-commerce. So this is uh, Microsoft HoloLens had a partnership with Volvo uh, in dealer showrooms. So they were showing these AR experiences to potential Volvo customers right in the showroom and of course you could extend this later on to beyond the home. So 
Anything that ties directly to a sale, I consider to be revenue generating. One of the other things I see, in, as I mentioned, in e-commerce is, say, for example, in Ikea or someone like that, at some point in the future, we could get to the point where instead of just shopping the catalog, I'm looking for a couch in my living room, and I can have an AR and go through the entire catalog of their sofas and see which one fits perfectly in my environment, walk around to make sure that everything fits, and then with the click of your virtual button or whatever, actually just order it instead of going through the whole process of going to Ikea, walking through that maze of the store to figure out where everything is, and then not seeing all of the, all of the potential um, models or, or, or products that are available online, just seeing the subset that's available at the retail store. So that's a little bit further out, but I think that's, uh, if you can drive that experience to the enterprise and show them that that's going to connect directly to sales, I think that's a powerful message to send. The last one uh, I'll talk about, and I'm sorry, revenue generation was third, not last, uh, is employee engagement. So uh, I see this as any activities that really enhance the employee satisfaction at work, leading to greater retention and greater morale. Um, training and lifelong learning are some of them in health and wellness. So if you look at, especially now with, the, um, with all of the politics or whatnot around uh, health insurance or whatnot, a lot of companies are actually spending money to make sure that their employees lead healthy lifestyles. So uh, you can actually earn money if you walk to work or if you lose weight or if you stop smoking. They actually give you monetary incentives to do that because that cuts their health costs down in the future. So if you can incorporate this type of stuff into uh, Enterprise's health and wellness program, I think that's a great selling point. One of the things I saw also at all was uh, guided meditation VR. Now, I can't meditate for the life of me because I'm constantly thinking of things. But when I try this on, it's like if it transports me to this Buddhist monastery somewhere or to Tahiti and I don't realize that I'm either at home or at work, it might help me a lot more in terms of that and all of the health benefits associated, of course, with meditation which many people are aware of. So this was a great experience. And the other one that I saw at AWE, which was, was kind of a small booth, but uh, reality here, it was pretty amazing. The, it's one of the best demonstrations that I saw at AWE. So, and it was pretty simple. So it was a VR, it was a VR not AR, it was a VR headset. And uh, it was a Tai Chi example. So you had two controllers in your hand, one of your hands was white, one was black. And then you have music, and coming at you are a set of spheres, both in black and white. And they're coming at you at different patterns. So the whole point of the game is for you to make sure you touch the spheres of the different colors with your hands. So I'm totally immersed in this experience, and I'm doing that. And I don't realize that in real life, I'm kind of like doing all this, because I'm just in the virtual world, I'm driving through it. So how many of you here have seen The Matrix? Do you remember at, when he like, learns Kung Fu, and he takes the thing off, and he's like, I know Kung Fu. So like after I was done with that, I was like, I know Tai Chi. <laughs> and it was just like such, an, it was such a simple yet incredible experience and something that is real easy sales pitch for someone in terms of like bringing that into the, your, your experience. You know, they have some companies, the more advanced ones are setting up yoga rooms and things like that. So if you can imagine setting up like a VR health or a VR portion in your health and wellness studio or whatnot within the enterprise organization. I think that's one of the other potential applications that I see for uh, VR in the AR VR in the enterprise. So I kept this short because uh, that's it. So that's what I wanted to talk about. Thank you.